All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master. Today we're talking about tools that young technicians getting in this industry need, but may not realize they need them. Now, obviously you need sockets and wrenches and impacts, and I've done videos about that kind of stuff. Let's talk about some of the more niche stuff you're gonna need that you don't realize until you get in the field and actually, well, need them. Plastic clips. It's how modern cars are held together you're going to need tools to deal with them. Accept it. <laughs> now my preference is these pliers from Dent Fix. They work in most situations for most plastic clips. There's situations where they don't work and you need other tools, but for 90% of what I do, I use these. Now I did a whole video about these pliers and I'll link it in the description. They're excellent and they do a great job, but sometimes you need some other stuff. So watch that video and kind of get an idea of the tools you're gonna need to do plastic clips. As much as it sucks, you're gonna be dealing with a lot of them. A general service technician is gonna be dealing with a lot of basic repairs. And I've already talked about like extended reach, you know, Phillips and Torx for air cleaners, stuff like that in other videos. Now, drive belt is a good upsell for a GS. They're not that hard in most cases. You can tell when they're worn by how deep the grooves are. There's videos out there for the tools, and etc. but drive belt's worn pretty deeply. It needs to be replaced. So, belt tools. Now, all I have here is a tool to help you get a belt over tougher position pulleys. And I would also recommend the gear wrench tool. Now, I don't own that tool, I generally use uh, mountain wrenches or a older tool that is simpler than the gear wrench, but I haven't need, felt the need to replace it with the gear wrench drive belt tool kit. Now I'll link both of these tools in the description, but the gear wrench tool is an excellent starter for doing drive belts. Now obviously there are situations where that tool won't work, but it does a great job in most situations, so highly recommend. This tool, depending on where you work, might not be necessary. If you're working in a shop that primarily deals with quick disconnect radiator hoses and stuff like that, I'd recommend silicone spray and a good heavy duty 90 degree pick for those. But if you do deal with spring clamps, I'd highly recommend getting a set of these pliers from them. They're specific for those spring clamps, as well as a cable driven version from Astro Pneumatic to deal with hose clamps. Occasionally you're gonna have to deal with hose clamps, whatever it is, whether it's just taking it off a air cleaner because you've got a vent on it that needs to come off for you to get the cover out, stuff like that. Highly recommend having both on hand because Weird Situations really helps with having the cable driven one. Now another tool that is very often overlooked, you know, they'll go out and buy tools to compress brake calipers. Again, GS gonna be doing basic repairs. Caliper hooks. I don't recommend anybody does brake jobs without caliper hooks. Supporting the caliper, don't hang it on the hose. It's a pet peeve of mine to see a caliper hanging by its hose. It should never hang by its hose. It should never drop. Support it either with bungee straps, zip ties, or get you some of these dedicated hooks. I don't care which version you use. Just don't let it hang by the dang hose. It's bad for the hose. It's bad for the customer's car, so don't do it. Get a cook, bungee strap, whatever you feel works for you, but don't let it hang. It's a little preachy, but it annoys me. Now the next ones are needed more and more nowadays with every hood being held up with struts instead of springs and stuff like that. And that is, Hood props. Now a standard hood prop like this from Lyle isn't expensive and you can use it for other things like depressing a brake pedal to check for brake lights, stuff like that, but it's just an extendable shaft that'll hold up a hood, especially one that's missing hardware, i.e. the prop rod. Been there, done that many times. That's actually one of the main reasons I still recommend this tool, even though it does wear out and will need to be replaced periodically because it's not warrantied. The grip, you know, they start sliding after a while. Now I would also recommend getting strut clamps. 
The reason for this is if you hook a pair of vice grips, you are gonna damage the seal. So even if it held the hood for the customer for a little bit while they're you know, under it, if you use vice grips on it, it's destroyed. While we're, you know, a technician's more concerned about staying up over a long time, especially with a underhood light or something like that on it, the customer probably is only checking their oil or something like that, and you don't want it just shutting on them because you destroyed the seals. And let's be honest, most people won't pay to have a hood struts replaced. But get you one of these, are again, not expensive. Magnetic trays, get you a bunch. They're really not that expensive anymore. You can get them on Amazon for a couple bucks. Magnetic trays are worth their weight just to organize bolts, even if it's only a handful of bolts getting started. Putting up, having a place to put your bolts that you've taken off a vehicle other than the cowl, other than the lift arm is awesome. So magnetic trays, they're, get a few. Now this last one comes as much from my live stream as day-to-day -day life, but that is a split beam torque wrench. Most shops are going to require you to hand torque lug nuts. A snap-on tech angle is really expensive for doing that and it's highly likely that during the course of your day it's going to get damaged and you're going to have to pay not only to buy it but also to replace it. You can buy these. They don't need to be super accurate. Ulsa tools you know, there's a bunch of them out there. They're not expensive anymore. You know, unlike the snap-on that I have in my hand, they're not expensive. Buy you one, use that for torquing wheels. You don't have to screw back the cap every time you use it. You can leave it set at whatever torque works for you. You can reset it when you're doing something different, but I normally leave it at 100 foot-pounds and adjust from there depending on what kind of vehicle I'm working on. You know, F-150, 140 foot-pounds, it gets adjusted. But that way you can torque wheels properly and not worry about a super expensive torque wrench getting damaged. Because let's be honest, a $700 torque wrench, you drop off a lift and the screen breaks, kind of useless. So you got to replace it or fix it, and then you're out of torque wrench for a while. So I love my tech angles but not for wheels. Just get one of those rather than trying to get it off the tool truck. Now bonus, a notes app or a literal pad and paper. When you figure out a tool that a fellow technician is using and it's working well for them or it's something you see as your needs, write it down so you don't forget about it. <laughs> because trust me, you will. As you see tools getting used, you will figure out, I need this then prioritize those tools based on what you're doing. You know, obviously if all you're doing is, you know, changing oil and rotating tires, you probably don't need that snap-on scan tool, but you probably need the torque wrench or, you know, brake tools or whatever you need. But keep a list and then make sure you shop around for that tool rather than just going on the tool truck and buying it there. Because trust me, a lot of those tools are available elsewhere for a lot less money. <laughs> so, hope you found this video helpful. As always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Ray Master.